This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Thank you so much for having me. Shosti Mardasra Shlita. Rabbi Shabbos, it's a great cover to be in the Mardasra's base Medrash. And uh, we wish the Mardasra many gesundheit yarn here. Al kisei mamlachtoi. And Baharvat Satoira, Lahag Dotar Ladira. I want to thank the Muncie Night Seder Base Medrash for hosting me yet again. And uh, we hope we could come together many occasions uh, for Kiddush Shem Shemayim. So I want to focus today on three words of the Rosh Hashanah Davening. In the Bracha of Shoifarais, which uh, the main body of the Mosaf on Rosh Hashanah, you know, the Sefer HaIkram writes that the three main principles in uh, Yiddishkeit are Emunah Bashem, Hashkoch Pratis, and Torah Min Hashemayim. And uh, Sefer Ikram even quotes a Pasuk in Yeshaya, that if a person integrates and inculcates these three Yisoydais, this brings the greatest Yeshua. And that is why Anshe Knesset Hagdoyla really formulated in the Musaf that uh, the main body of the Shemona Esrei is enunciating these three principles. Malchios, of course, is Metzias Hashem. Zechroinois is Hashkach Pratis, And Shaifarois is Torah and Hashemayim. The final words of Shaifarois, we say, Ki ata shoimeya kol Shaifar. Yubayin Shalom hears the sound of the Shaifar. Umazin Trua, he hears the Trua. What I want to focus on tonight, three words. Ve'ein doime lach. And there's no one like you. No kidding. We know that. That's Pashat. Goes without saying. What's the Havamina? Why do we say these words? You know, Ve'in Doi Malach. You could stick that anywhere. Mo'ida'ani l'fonecha. Ve'in Doi Malach. Adoi no'ilam. Hashem Malach. Ve'in Doi Malach. Ve'in Doi Malach. You could really throw it in anywhere. Anytime you're short on a shvach, just throw in the words. Ve'in Doi Malach. What are the words Ve'ein Doi Malach doing in the Chasima of Shoifaro is Ki'ata Shoimea Ko Shoifar? And perhaps to make the question more extreme, there's a cloud that you need, Me'ein HaChasima Somach V'Chasima, that in close proximity to the conclusion of the Bracha, you need to say something which is connected to the Chasima. What does Ve'ein Doi Malach have to do to with Baruch Atah Hashem Shoimea Kol Truas Amo Yisrael Baruch What's it doing here? What are the meaning of these words? So perhaps you could say Pashat, and uh, I believe last year we spoke about this Indian, and that is aside from the fact that blowing the shofar is a mitzvah masa, like. Wearing tefillin, sitting in the sukkah, dalim minim, etc. There's another component to tekiah shofar, and this is an idea we spoke about last time, and that is tekiah shofar is a type of a tefillah. The Gemara says in the Sechta Rosh Hashanah, the Gemara is talking about why we're now to blow a shofar of a par, of an egal. And the Gemara uses the famous principle because in kategar nasa sanegar. How could the defense of the shofar, then it's going to be a kategor, it's going to be an accusation against Kal Yisrael. It's going to remind Hashem of the Chet Egal. And the Gemara asks, you know, we're not always worried about in kategor nasa sanegar. The Gemara says, granted the Kohen Gadol, on the, the, the um, Lefnai V'Lefnim, he wears the Big Day Lavan, but Mi Bachotz, he does wear the Big Day Zav, that means we're only worried about in kategor nasa sanegar Mi Bachnim. And the Baal Toikea is not blowing the shofar in the Kodesh HaKadosh. It's not like you take the Baal Toikea, you stuff him in the Aron and he's blowing, you know. He's blowing from the Bima, he's blowing Mibachutz. Why would there be a problem of Avein Kategar Nasa Sanegar? And the Gemara says, Kivan de Lezikarenu, Kelefnai Vilefnim Dami. That since the purpose of Tkiah Shofar is to remind Hashem about what we need, it's like we're in the Kodesh HaKadosh. How is it like we're in the Kodesh HaKadoshim? So the Brisk Rav explains that besides Kiyah Shofar being a Maisa, it's also a form of a tefillah. It's, it's a Shemad Esra, it's a davening. And the Shulchan Aruch writes, and it's a Shulchan Aruch which is misunderstood. Shulchan Aruch writes that when you daven Shemad Esra, you should be mechavin keneged beis Kodesh HaKadoshim. 
which people mistakenly think it means you should face the Kaidash HaKadosh, and that's not what it means. The Mishnah Bura says you face Eretz Yisrael, you don't face the Kaidash HaKadosh. Yechavim Kenege based Kaidash HaKadosh, it's a Mishnah Bura. If you came here tonight just to hear this, Zok the Mishnah Bura, when you dab in Shemona Esrei, you should be Mechavim that you're standing in the Kaidash HaKadosh. That's Pshad in the Mechaber. Therefore, since Tkia Shoifer is a form of a tefillah, so it's like you're in the Kodesh HaKadosh, and then the rule of Ein Kategor, Nasa Sanegar, applies to Tkia Shoifer. Another Raya. The Gemara says that the Shoifer should be Kafuf. Why? Because since during davening, the position to stand in is Kafuf, therefore the Shoifer should be Kafuf. Mashmita Yitzel Har Sinai, just because... The position of tefillah is kafuf. So what? What does that have to do with the shofar? No. The shofar is also a type of tefillah. A t- shofar is an instrument of tefillah. And therefore, if the position of tefillah should be a position of bent over and humility, the shofar should also be kafuf. We also spoke out, just a very brief, the Lushan of the Shulchan Arach. Shulchan Arach says, Simen Tav Kuf Pe'alef. Tell you a humorous thing, you know, how I remember Hilchas Slichos are in Simon Tuf Kuf Pei How are you supposed to remember that? The Tuf, it's a tough time of the year and you need coffee, Kuf Pei Aleph. So you say, oh, come on, that's ridiculous. I once went to a shir. <laughs> in Queens, I was a rub in Queens, you know, before I was in Five Towns, so there are a lot of Sfarad in there. Rab Yitzchok Yosef came to speak in Queens. Rabbi Vav Yosef. So he had a big oil on, and he poses the following question to him. He says, does anybody here know what Simon and Shulchan Aruch's dog in Maran. There was Tamicha. Nobody had any idea. He said, "Come on, pay Gimel, Rashi Teva, it's gefilte fish." He said. <laughs> and anyway, by the way, Rav Yaakov Emden writes, "Helchay Shayfar is in Simon Taf Kuf Pei Vav Gematria Shayfar." So you see, the Simonim had a certain hashgacha process to them. But be it as it may, Shulchan Aruch says like this. Noyagim lakum ba'ashmoras meresh chodesh elo. Zok drama vana hago vana loy nahagin on kain. We're not knowing this way, but what do we do? We blow shofar. Yeah. Well, you know, just say it's not our minhag to say slichos. What 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 does shofar have to do with it? It's not. This is not the place to say. No, the pshat is shofar is a type of tefillah. The svardim their tefillah that they offer is slichos. We're not noyeg to be mispalo slichos. We're mispalo but kia shayfar. So Rav Tzadik HaKoyin writes, so what is the tefillah of the shayfar? It's sort of the unarticulated cry of the heart. You know, merubim tzarach amcha. We have so many needs. We have so many tzrachim. We can't even articulate and gather all of our thoughts together and express to Rebbein Shalom all the myriad of things that we need. So what do we do? The Baal Toikea gives the Geshrei from the Lev, which is the Tkia Shoifar, and only the Rebbein Hashem could discern in that unarticulated cry what we're asking for, what we need. We don't even need, no, we can't even express all the, myri- the millions of Pratim of items that we need to ask the Rebbein Hashem for. But the Rebbein Hashem is able to hear in the Kal Shoifar, all of the needs of Klal Yisrael, all the needs of every Yachid. So we say, Rebbeinu Shalaylam, Ki ata shoymeya ko shoifar. You could listen to the sound of the shoifar. Umazin trua. You know why you could do it? The aim doy melach. There's no one like you who could hear the unarticulated sound and discern and decipher and translate really what we're asking for. Okay, it's a very nice chat. But what's pshat in the words? If Anshei Knesset HaGdolah were Mesakein, that the final words of Shefaros before the Chasima are Ve'ein Doim Elach, we have to know exactly what was the Kavana of Anshei Knesset HaGdolah. There's a very interesting Lashen in the Torah. The Torah, Simen Tav Kuf Pei Aleph, look at number 7 please. The Torah writes that on Rosh Hashanah, even though typically if somebody was uh, being tried for a capital offense, they would be so scared and so nervous and so ismench 
They wouldn't be able to groom themselves properly. They wouldn't be able to dress properly. They would come in, love a shechayrim, mesatev shechayrim, megadal ziknoi, vein chaytech tziparnav. A person would come in disheveled and unkempt. But says the, the tour, lefi she'eno yodea ech yetzedinoi. We don't know what the outcome would be, but zok the tour avo Yisrael einon came. Not so by Klal Yisrael. Loifshim levanim, umesatfim levanim, umegalchim zikonam, umechatchim siparneen, veoichlin, veshoisim, usmechim. Why? Listen to the Lashon of the Torah. Lefi sheyoidin shehakadosh baruchu yase lohem nes. Because they're confident that the Yivan Hashem will perform a miracle. What does the Torah mean that we're confident Hashem is going to make a miracle? What kind of miracle? We're not hoping for a miracle. We're hoping for a good judgment. Is that a ness? Not a ness. You go in front of a judge, and we're trying to present our case, and we have reasonable basis. We're trying our best. We try to do tshuva. Mitzvah is masim toivim. Is it a nest that we're hoping for? We hope that the Yibam Shem will have rachamim, judge us, becheset. What miracle are we hoping? There are no miracles took place in Rosh Hashanah. It's not commemorating Kriyas Yamsov, like Pesach. We're not making Sha'asa Nisim La'avoyseinu. It's not Chanukah or Purim. What's Pshat in the Lashon HaTor? L'fi she'yoidin she'akadosh baruch hu yase lohen nes. What kind of miracle? There is a halacha in Shulchan Aras, Simen Reish Chafei. Zak the Mechaber, if you see a friend who you haven't seen for 30 days, you make Shachian. Okay, we don't do that anymore. Because if you haven't seen someone for 30 days, we know about their whereabouts. There's so many medium of information that if you didn't hear anything, then everything is okay. And the Mechaber continues, if you see someone who you haven't seen for 12 months, what bracha do you make? You make the bracha of Mechaye HaMesim. Why? So the Mishnabura quotes the Marsha. Marsha says that if you haven't seen someone for 12 months, then one thing is for sure. A Rosh Hashanah and a Yom Kippur have passed. And if a Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur have passed, the person has survived a capital case. That means the person's life was on the line, their entire matziv was in jeopardy, and they were revived and resuscitated. And therefore, after 12 months, Chazal were masakin uniformly, that you make the bracha of Mechaye Hamesim. This is a little bit of a different understanding than we're used to. We sort of and tend to think that we stand before the Rebbe Shalom on Rosh Hashanah and we say, Rebbe Shalom, this past year, Baruch Hashem, we were alive, we had good health, we had Parnasa, we had Nachas. Please, Rebbe Shalom, Hamoitzi Mechaveroi, all of Haraya, status quo, keep it that way. That's not the chant. The words umi doy melach are very specific expression. It is a shvach that has only one connotation. Mi chamoicha bal gevurais umi doy melach melech nemes umechaya. The expression of umi doy melach specifically refers to one ability of Hashem, the ability of tchias hamisa. Certainly the Rebbe Hashem has Gevura and in many ways, in millions of ways, there's nothing doyme to the Rebbe Hashem. But there's one particular Gevura that Hashem has that as that is mamashin doymelach that nobody could even come close to. Maybe other things people could mimic and imitate and understand, but there's one Indian of the Rebbeinu Shalom. After everything the Rebbeinu Shalom does, Olam Azeh, Olam Abba, Limoy Samashiach, the greatest kayach of the Rebbeinu Shalom is the Ein Doymelacham Oishienu Leschias Hamesim. 
and on Rosh Hashanah, when we are standing before the Rebbeinu Shlalem, the Kavano should be, we're like Nason Mamish, who need to be Zoycha to Chayim, not the Pshat, we're Chayim, and we want to renegotiate and extend. It's not, we're not filing for an extension. We're not a, a, filing for a continuation. We're filing for Tchias Hanesim Mamish. And therefore the Torah writes, we're confident, Baruch Hashem, that the Ein Doim Elach, Moshienu, will make a miracle for us. What miracle are we hoping for? We're hoping for the miracle of Tchias Hanesim. The famous Vart, of Hagoyim Rav Naftali Trap, he got up, Lel Slichais, Chavetz Chaim asked Hagoyim Rav Naftali to speak before Slichais, and he said, Pshat, and what we say in Slichais, Lai Bechesed, Lai Bemasim, Banu Lefanecha, Kedalim Ukerashim, Dafaknu Dulasecha. And Rav Naftali interpreted it, that when we stand before the Rebbeinu Shalom on Rosh Hashanah, on Yom Naram, it's not the Pshat Rebbeinu Shalom, Baruch Hashem, my bank account is full, just don't tamper with it, and I'm not even going to tell you the account number, just stay out. No, that's not the Pshat. Kedalim Ucheroshim Dafak Nudulasecha is that when the year is over, so is life, and so is the parnasa, and so is everything that we feel mochsuk on. Everything we feel that we have in our back pocket, that we feel Rebbeinu Shalom, keep it that way. No, that's not how we ask. Well, we, the way we ask on Rosh Hashanah is, Kedalim Ucheroshim Dafak Nudulasecha, Rebbeinu Shalom, my account is zero. I don't have anything. I don't have chayim. I don't have money. I don't have nacha. I don't have mishpacha. Rebbeinu Shalom, please give me everything once again. And that is the miracle of Tchias HaMesim. And that is why Chazal specifically used the expression the Ein Doi Melach. I saw this in a Sefer Oz Yashir. There's Talmud Chacham in Kugarn Hills. Rav Moshe Shward. He's a Magid Shir over there. And uh, he quotes Rav Moshe Shapiro, Zechatzak Lavracha, who brings down from the Arizal that even someone whose life is Kotsov, to live a long life, on Rosh Hashanah, nothing is given in the least beyond one year. The Rebbe Shalom is not Koiveya, is not Goizer beyond one year. No Parnasa, no Chayim, no Nachas. It's a one year lease. And that is a very powerful and poignant meaning of the words the Ein Doime Lach. We say, Rebbeinu Shalom, this is a Kayach and a Gvura that nobody else could do. Who else could be Mechaye Mesem? I read, um, they have these books that come out now based on the teachings of Rabbi Victor Miller, Zechazag Lavracha. So when I was a Bachar, I used to, uh, I grew up on in Flatbush, MN 31st. So I used to walk to Rav Miller Shul. It was quite a long walk. So Miller would say, we just had in our shul a whole bunch of Shalom Zachars and Kedushim Baruch Hashem. The birth of a baby on the first day a child is born. So it's Mama Shanes, because in utero, the baby's lungs don't work. The baby doesn't breathe. The oxygen the baby gets comes from the mother. So typically in a regular person, the heart is metabol of the blood. It pumps it up to the lungs. The lungs take in the oxygen. And then it goes back to the heart, and the heart pumps it to the rest of the body. But by a baby, the baby's lungs aren't working. It doesn't need oxygen from the lungs, and if it would go to the lungs, it would be disastrous. So what does the Rebbe Shalom do? There is a hole in the heart of a baby where the blood just flows from one atria to the other, and it doesn't go to the heart. How long could a person survive with a hole in the heart? Not even a minute. So how, how does a child born? So Yibansha makes Mamisha a mess that the child comes out and he cries. His lungs open up. He inhales oxygen. It creates tremendous pressure in the heart and the hole seals up. No surgery, no doctors, no procedures. If everything goes, Mamish, Micha Moicha, Micha Moicha. Now, but the greatest gavura, the greatest gavura of the Rebbe Sham, the Gemara says that the day will come 
Tiadata ki ani Hashem bepischi es kurei sechem when the Rebbeim Shem knocks on the door of the kever, and he reconstitutes all the molecules that have decomposed, and he puts it all back together, and the person is covered with his skin and flesh again. That is the greatest miracle. That's one of the three keys the Rebbeim Shem never gives up control of. But of all the abilities of Hashem, Micha Moicha Bal Gevurais, Umi Doi Melach, Melach Memes Umechaya. But it's a miracle that we ask for every Rosh Hashanah. Every Rosh Hashanah, what we're davening for is, Rebani Shalaylam, please revive us, resuscitate us. We have nothing, Bechazata, we have nothing in our back pocket, and we ask you to show and demonstrate. The greatest nest you have in your repertoire. Perhaps then we can understand. Now, if I were to ask you, what is the central event in Chumash that we focus on on Rosh Hashanah? It's Akedas Yitzchak, Kriyas Hatoyer, the second day of Rosh Hashanah. Why do we blow the the horn of an ayol to remember Akedas Yitzchak? The Mishnah Bura quotes from the Maril. When we go to do Tashlech, why do we do Tashlech by the river? So the Maril says, because when Avram Avinu was going to do the Akedah, the Satan sort of disguised as a river and interfered with Avram Avinu, and Avram Avinu went up to his nose and into the water and he cried out, Hashem, ki The reason we go to the river to do Tashlech is to remember the Zchus of Akedah Yitzchak. One of the simanim, right? People have on the table the head of a fish. But really, that's not what the Shulchan Aruch says. Shulchan Aruch says that for uh, the simanim, you have roish kavas, right? You have a ram. Why? Says the Shulchan Aruch, zecher la'akedas yitzchak. Tell you over an amazing meiri. The meiri in the Chibar Hatshuva, meiri says, what's kaparas? What is, what's Kaparas? Wait a second. You're telling me, guy does an Avera, he did Averas the whole year, and then he takes an animal, and he goes, da, 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 and the Averas go on the animal? I mean, you got something going over there. So you do, do Averas the whole year, and then you put on an animal? What's, what's Kaparas? Says the Meiri, the original Minog Kaparas has nothing to do with the chicken. Says the Meiri, original Minog of Kaparas is with an Ayo. What's Pshat in Kaparas? Says Meiri. It's a reenactment of Akedas Yitzchak. When Avram Avinu was told, Atishach Yotcha El Hanar, so he took the ayol, and Rashi brings down every Maisa he did on the ayol. He says, he Ratzon, that you should consider what I'm doing to the ayol as if it was done to Yitzchak. That was the first Kaparis. The purpose of Kaparis is in memory to recall the Zuchus of Akedas Yitzchak. One simple question. What does Akedas Yitzchak have to do with Rosh Hashanah? So you say, well, the Psikta says it happened on Rosh Hashanah. Eh, not everybody says it happened on Rosh Hashanah. There are many Midrashim that happened on Yom Kippur. Yaakov Ruveni brings down and happened on Yom Kippur. So, so why exactly are we focusing on the Akedah, on Rosh Hashanah? It's a big zechus. Yeah, I got it. I know it's a big zechus. What, what does it have to do with Rosh Hashanah? The Akedah, Yitzchak, Lazarai, Hayon, Berachamim, Tizkar. Why are we so focused on Akedah, Yitzchak? Why is the Akedah almost the central theme of Rosh Hashanah? Marv Rabbi said, because you know what we're hoping for on Rosh Hashanah. We're hoping for the greatest miracle that Hashem has. We're hoping for Tchiyas HaMesim. How do we know that the Yibbam Shem is Mechayei Mesim? When was the first Tchiyas HaMesim in history? So contrary to what many think, that Avram Avinu was told, don't touch the kid, and nothing happened to Yitzchak, all the Midrashim bring down, Parcha Nishmasai. The Yitzchak Avinu expired at the Akedah. If you look in the Shibayle Halakeh, if you take a look, please, at number 12, 
Shibal HaLeket writes that the Shman Esrei was formulated based on the progression of Klal Yisrael's history. So Shibal HaLeket writes, when Avram Avinu was saved from Ur Kazdim, so the Malachi Hashores cried out, Baruch Atah Hashem, Magen Avraham. And then when Yitzchak was nekar agave yamezbeach, says the says the shibali aleked nasa deshen v'hayaforoi mushloch al haram aria that Yitzchak avinu turned into ashes. Says the shibali aleked he quotes the medrash the rivan shalom took the tal hatchia he took the dew of tchias hamesim and that's pshat and what David Amelch says in Tehillim kital chermoin sheyoyred al harayt siyon. You don't have to be a big expert in the topography of Eretz as well to know that the Chermayim and you know the Har Maria are not really close to each other. What does it mean? Ketal Chermayim sheyored ar Har Eitzion. The different shatim says the Shiva Aleke Rivan Shalom took the Tal Hatchia from Har Chermayim and he was Mechaye Mason Yitzchak Avinu Miyad Poschu Malache Hashores VaOmru Baruch Ato Hashem Mechaye Hamesim. Other midrashim bring down Pekadir of Lazar, the Oisam midrashim that Yitzchak Avinu himself, when he came, when he awoke, when he was revived, when he was resuscitated, says the Pekadir of Lazar, Ra Yitzchak Tchias Hamesim and Atayra Shikal Hamesim Asidim Lechayos Ba Oisa Sha Pasach Viyamar Baruch Ata Hashem Mechaye Hamesim. So it's suggested in the Sefer Oz Yasher then that what we're hoping for and what we're davening for and what we're mishabeach the Rebbe Nishlam for in Rosh Hashanah is even though we stand before the Rebbe Nishlam kedalim ucharashim without chazakos without chayim without mamon without mishpacha but we ask the Rebbe Nishlam please be mechaye nesim and we know that whatever the Rebbe Nishlam does called irin the Rebbe Nishlam creates through the system of Masei Ovoi simen labanim and memela whether it happened on Rosh Hashanah, or even if it didn't happen on Rosh Hashanah, the Masei Avoy Simen Labanim, of what the Rebbe Hashanah does for every year on Rosh Hashanah, is Akedah Yitzchak. The, the Tchias HaMesim that occurred to Yitzchak Avinu was the paradigm and the model and the pre-enactment of what occurs to every single year, every Rosh Hashanah at the time of the day. And as frightening as it is, on the other hand, like the Torah says, we're confident that the Rebbe Hashem will make for us Nisim ben Aflois. Which miracle, which Nes? The greatest miracle of all. The miracle of Tchiyas HaMesim. And that is why, one of the reasons, possibly, why the Akedah Yitzchak is such a sensual theme to Rosh Hashanah. But I believe there's another dimension of the Tchiyas HaMesim that we have over here as well. Aside from the fact that just in a physical sense, and just to bring it out more, I'll tell you a kasha of Rav Aizel HaKharif. So Rav Pam would say over, you know, the Gemara says, Amar Rabbi Yossi, Adam Nidain B'chal Yain. Person is judged every day. So what are we getting so worked up of on Rosh Hashanah? Every day is Rosh Hashanah. Every day the Rebbe Hashanah judges us. So what's different? According to Rabbi Yossi, according to Rabbi Yossi Shita, Adam Nidam Chayyam, so what's different between the rest of the year and Rosh Hashanah? So it says Rabbi Yossi Charif, the rest of the year, let's say Lamashal, today's judgment, the way it works is, Rabbi Yossi says, oh, yesterday you were alive, and yesterday you had Gezent, and yesterday you had Nachas. Okay, your muhsuk on that. Let's see if we need to change the status quo. Comes Rosh Hashanah and the status quo is closed, thrown out. There is no status quo. There are no chazakas. There's no assumptions. There's no muhsuk. It's we stand before the Rivasham, Kedalim, Ukarashim, exactly the idea that we're mentioning. And what we're hoping for is not continuation, not Rebunisham, you know, you're doing a good job, keep it up. No. We're Maspalel, Kiata, Shaimea, Kal Shoifar, the Eindai Melach. How many days are there from Rosh Chodesh Elul until Yom Kippur? So, Arba Amyayim. 
What's the union of the Arba and Yoim? So there's a Kaf Achayim, there's a Kaf Achayim that Rav Aaron Kaler, the Tzad Lavracha, Rav Shneir Kaler would say over often. Says the Kaf Achayim, the Mem Yoim from Rosh Chodesh Elul until Yom Kippur is connected the Mem Yoim of Yitzira Savlan. That we know that even though it takes nine months to, uh, for a child to be born, but the first 40 days are the formation of the Vlad, the limbs, the Eivarim, the Gidim, the Neshama, everything is created within 40, and then from then on it just expands and gets bigger and develops, but it takes 40 days of Yetziras Havlad. So what's the connection between the Mem Yoim from Rosh Elul and the Arba Yoim of Yetziras Havlad? What does one thing have to do with each other? So the idea is as follows. Aside from the fact that, as we mentioned, we're mispalo for a miracle of Tchiyas HaMesim. But the Medrash tells us that there's another dimension of the way we stand before the Rebbe Hashem and Rosh Hashanah as Mesim. The Medrash says, if you take a look in the Yalkut Shemaini, in number 18, for Rabbanon Amran, Elu hadoyrois shehem kemesim b'maasehem, Uboim umispalalim lefanecha b'rosh Hashanah uviyoyim hakipurim. That the Rabbanon say that the pasuk tikasev zois ledar acharayim v'am nivra yahalalka. Who is the am nivra? What does it mean? The nation that Hashem created says the medrash that on Rosh Hashanah we stand before the Rebbe Hashem like mesim b'maasehem as if we're mesim, unworthy. Viata boyre oisam beria chadasha, and the Rebbeinu Shem creates them as a beria chadasha. In other words, the Medrash is saying that in Rosh Hashanah we stand before Him, mesim b'maaseinu. We're not even worthy to be alive, almost with the feeling, like bechesed v'le we're not worthy to be considered chayim. We know rishayim bechayim kruya mesim. And the feeling that we have in Rosh Hashanah is Rebbeinu Shalom, we have not utilized our life in a way that we could be truly called Chayim. Please Rebbeinu Shalom. Don't just resuscitate us and revive us because we lost our status quo. Resuscitate us and revive us spiritually because we're Nechshav Lefanecha Kameisim. It's almost as if on Rosh Hashanah what we need to do is we need to be recreating ourselves. We need to be born again. The Am Nivra. Keneged Mem Yom Shal Yitziras Havlad. The 40 days from Rosh Chodesh Elul to Yom HaKippurim is a, basically a recreation of ourselves. We're, we're asking about Hashem not, not just to give us life again, but to recreate us and give us a new opportunity. Very interesting. You know, in the Yaros Tavash, in the first uh, Prasha of Rabbi Yanisan, he goes through each bracha of Shman Esrei. And he says, in which bracha should a person be mechavein to ask the Yvonne for Siyata Deshmaya to do tshuva? He says, in the second bracha, in the bracha of Ata Gibar Liyayel Hashem Mechayi Mesim Ata. He says, Rabbi Yonasan, Tchias HaMesim is the closest thing that there is to the process of tshuva. Tshuva is really a form of Tchias HaMesim. The recreation that a yid does to his neshama through the process of tshuva is nothing short of tchias amesim. Let me read to you the words of Rabbi Yonason Ibishitz in number 19 of the Yaros Devash and Chelek Aleph, Jurish Aleph. He says, Kabbalas tshuva mechoite hu migeder tchias hamesim ki rasha b'chayov koroi meis v'chashar yashuv harei zeh b'chlal mechaye mesim. So there's another dimension of Tchiyas HaMesim that's taking place on Rosh Hashanah. It's not only that we have no Cheskas Chayim and we ask Yibar give us life yet again, 
But when we, when we beg the Rebbe Hashem, please allow us to recreate ourselves through the process of tshuva. Tshuva is a form of tchias hanesim. For tshuva to work, we also need the idea of micha meicha ba'al gavura isu midoy melech, melech meimis umechaya. In fact, Tzadik HaKoyin writes that who is going to usher in the era of tchias hanesim? Eliyo Anavi. Who's going to usher in the era of tshuva? The heishiv levavay salbanim. Eliyahu Anavi. Wait a second. I thought a malach can't do two jobs. No, it's not two jobs. It's one job. Tchias hamesin and tshuva is the same process. It's the same kayach. It's the same mechanism. It's the same shlichos. Eliyahu ushers in the era of tchias hamesin. Eliyahu ushers in the process of tshuva. It's another dimension of who is like you who could take a bus or vadam and allow them to say we're but we know you have the gavura to recreate the neshama that this year it's ke'ilu hayon nivra. Now it's very interesting the tour brings down two minhagim of slichais, neither of which we do. Tor brings down the minhag of the Sardim, they start slichais from Rosh Chodesh El Olanan. And then the tour brings down, there's a minhag to begin slichais from Rosh Hashanah. And then the tour brings down another minhag to begin on the Sunday before Rosh Hashanah, unless you're not going to have four days. And basically the Vilna Gain says, you know, none of the above. <laughs> Vilna Gain says, you know what the Indian, you know when you should start Slichais? Chaf He Elo. Why? Why Chaf He Elo? Well, says the, the uh, Gain, because Rebbein Shalom created the world, Zehayayim, Tchilas Ma'asecha, Zikara, and Liyan Rishan. Hashem created Adam Rishan on Rosh Hashanah. Which would then mean that the first day of Bria Sa'ilam was Chaf Elo. So Chaf Elo is the beginning of the creation of the world. Therefore, we have to start saying Slichas. You know, like, what does one thing have to do with it? Oh, very nice. Yuvan Shalom said, Vayyam Alekim Yihiyar. Well, I, now I have to get up early in the morning because Yuvan Shalom said, Vayyam Alekim Yihiyar. It's a nice thing. Baruch Hashem. Yuvan Shalom said, Yihiyar. Why well, I have to get up early in the morning because of that? Now the pshat is, what we're trying to accomplish during Slichais is it's not Rebun Shalom, it's been a good year, thank you, we hope we have a lot of mice and toivim, and we hope the mitzvahs outweigh the averos. No, what we're doing in Chaydesh Elo, it's men, yoim, keneged, yitziras, havlad. We're trying to recreate ourselves. We're trying to recreate Klal Yisrael. It's a new Briyas HaOlam. When we get up early in the morning, we should jump up invigorated, with excitement, with a fresh start, realizing what the Rebbe Hashem were confident. We have no suffix that the Rebbe Hashem is going to invest in us the greatest ness in his ability, or the ness of Mechaye Mesim Ata Rav And therefore we begin Chaf Hei Elo. It's the creation of the world. So it comes out then, you know, they have all kinds of technology today. So, you know, if uh, the doctors have a legal holiday, so they'll say, okay, come, come in Monday's Labor Day, come in Sunday, we're going to induce you. Barbara, it's not nine months. The doctor says, eh, not nine months. You don't need nine months. Eight and a half is also good. And eight, they could also, they have the technology. And seven and six and five, they figured it all out. There's still one thing they never figured out. The men, young of Yitzhira Savlad, <laughs> there's no way out of that. It's because every moment... Every day, every hour, every second of the Yitzhira Havlad is critical. That might be the hour that the eye is formed, that the mayach is formed, that the Ever Shekha HaNeshama Tluyabai is formed. You can fool around with those 40 days of the Yitzhira Havlad. Well, if the Yemei Elol and the Aser Yemei Tshuva are the recreation of the Neshama and the Yid and the entire world, how vital then how critical then? Yeroch points out in the Yerach Lamayadim 
How critical is every day of Elul, every hour of Elul, every moment of Elul, every second we're recreating our neshama. Rebbe Hashem is investing us tremendous gevura, tremendous nisim. Every second we're the beneficiaries of the gevura and the, ni- the nisim and the chesed of the Rebbe Hashem, much more than the rest of the year. It's a time how every moment of Yimei Elul is invaluable. It's a time of Tchias HaMei Semamesh. Ki ato shaymeya kal shoifar umazen shua umidoy melach. It's very interesting. Who's the Navi of Tshuva? Which Navi teaches the world? Which Navi do we rely on in the closing minutes of the Arba Yom? To wake us up, Malacha Nirdam, Kum Karai Al Alekecha, Vayhi Devar Hashem El Yoyna Ben Amitai Lemar. Who's Yoyna? Malbum says, you know who Yoyna is. You know who Yoyna's mother was. She's the Almana that sustained El Yoyna She's the she's the Alm. And remember what happened to that Almana's son. The Amana son passed away. And what did Eliyahu do to that son? Eliyahu was Mechaye Mason, that son. In fact, it's very interesting that Zayar contrasts two individuals in Tanakh, Eliyahu and Yoyna. One thing they both have in common, they both asked the Yivan Hashem, please take my soul away from me. Eliyahu, when he was rebuking the people, they didn't listen. Elio asked to be taken away. Yoina asked to be taken away. Says the Zayar, the Kayach of Yoina came from Elio because Elio was Mechaye Mesim Yoina. Says the Zayar, Mi Allah Shamayim Viyarad, Mi Allah Shamayim Eliyahu was Allah Shamayim Viyarad, Yoina was Yarad. Yarad into the Nuna, into the fish. In fact, the Mepharshim say that when Yoyna cries out, Fatal mishachas chayai besatif olai nafshi es Hashem zocharti. What does Yoyna refer to when he says, My soul departed and you revived me? It refers to the time that he literally expired and Elio Anavi was mechayehem. He's one of the only people, if not the only individual in Tanakh, other than Yitzchak Avinu, that we know he had Tchiyas HaMesim. Why do you think he's the Navi of Tshuva? So I saw in a Sefer, Raza Yoyna, you're going to go tell Kla Yisrael, do Tshuva? Kla Yisrael says, Tshuva? It's impossible to do Tshuva. We're like Mason. We're in such a rut. We have so many bad habits. We're so sullied, we're so immersed, we're so sunken in sin. It's impossible to do tshuva. And the answer is that the derech it's impossible to do tshuva. Without the tal without the gevura of Hashem, without the umidoy melach, it's taka impossible to do tshuva. The omale hakadosh baruch hu oizrai eno yacholai. Tshuva is taka impossible. But Yoyna says, I know from first-hand experience that it is possible because I'm living proof to the kayach of Tchiyas HaNesim. I'm living proof that the Yubayna Shalom can exercise his kayach of umidoy melach, of melach meimis umachayu matzmiach Yeshua. And therefore Yoyna is the Navi of Tshuva. Because Yoyna could say, I'm not telling you over hearsay, I'm telling you first-hand experience. Now, Rabbeinu Yoyna wrote the Yisoyed HaTshuva. So everybody knows to do Tshuva, I and mean, the Rabban says you have to do at least four things, according to I mean, you have to do Aziva Sachet. And... Kabbalah also the same thing, it's a different thing. You need Vido, you need Harata. And Rabbi Yoyna has a tremendous chiddush. Rabbi Yoyna says that on the day that a person wants to do tshuva, understanding that a person feels very bogged down, one of the greatest impediments to tshuva is, I tried last year, I tried the year before, 
they're just some things, they're just never going to change. I don't feel roy, I feel dirty, sullied, bad habits. Says Rabbeinu Yoyna, Bayoim hahu yashlich kol peshov asher osa. Rabbeinu Yoyna writes in the Yisrael HaTshuva, on that day, just throw away your sins. So what's Rabbeinu Yoyna talking about? Aziva sachet? Just a one day? As just throw away your averis? V'yatsa atzmoi? Make believe you have no mitzvahs and no averas. So you say, averas, I understand. Why no mitzvahs? How about keep, hold on to the mitzvahs? No, the pshat is that in order, the first step to do tshuva, before aziva hachet, before charata, before any of the components of tshuva, there's a preliminary step. Make it as if you were born on that day. Say, Shekhar Bachazah. Well, what was some kind of psychological ploy? What is Rabbi Yonah talking about? But the answer is, there is a capacity that the Yibbana Shalom grants us. That we're able to stand before the Yibbana Shalom and say, we stand before you, can make them. And we ask you, please be Mechaye Mesim. Give us life. Give us Parnasa. Give us Nachas. Give us a Neshama. Give us Ruchnias. Give us the ability to stand before you. When we come before the Rebbe Nushalam on Rosh Hashanah, we're asking for the most difficult miracle that is possible to perform. But at the same time, we're confident the Rebbe Nushalam is going to do it. And I think this message lies in the three words that the Anshe Knesset Sagdoyla put at the very end of Shefaros. The Ein Doima Lach. This is a Ness that we could only be saw. Ein Lanu Amil Hishayim Ella Ala Vinu Shavah Shemayim. It's a Ness Rebun Shalom is able to do. It's a Ness Rebun Shalom wants to do. And we're confident that it's a Ness Rebun Shalom is going to do. So we should tackle all these Zaycha. To have personal Tchiyas HaMesim for every Yachid and for Klal Yisrael. And one of the Pesukim of Shoifaros is in Yishaya Perak Yerches that the great Shoifar of Tchiyas HaMesim which at first glance what does that Shoifar have to do with Rosh Hashanah? We're talking about blowing the Shoifar in Rosh Hashanah. Why invoke the Shoifar of Tchiyas HaMesim? But that's exactly the shofar that we're speaking about. That's what we're hoping for. We invoke the Akedah Yitzchak. That's the Masayavoy Simen Labanim. It's not only the greatest chus that we- You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.